Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our service of worship. Um, let's take a moment to greet one another. Say hi. This Zoom greeting that we've got. Um, remember, you can chat in any birthdays, anniversaries, or celebrations by way of our Zoom chat. That would be great. Um, we've got several birthdays this week. Uh, Linda Kelly and Ginny Norwood have their birthdays tomorrow. Um, Fran Fry has her birthday on Tuesday. Debbie Dyer on Wednesday, Vicki Smith on Thursday, and a whole bunch of folks on Friday. Um, Deb Wade, Mark Reese, John Willett on Friday, and then next Saturday, Isabella Wellman Webster and Marie Garland. So happy birthday to all of you folks. If there's other things you wanna celebrate or share with us, please let us know by way of our chat. Also in our service, when we come to our time of prayer, you can share your prayers by way of our Zoom chat as well. A couple things to let you know about. Um, it's the third Sunday of Advent. So if you haven't already, I hope you'll get together um, some candles to light. We'll light three candles this morning. Uh, if you'd like to be a greeter or a liturgist or to offer special music, Robin is a great person to see about that. Open table happens on Tuesday, every Tuesday. Uh, morning prayer, Tuesday morning at uh, 8.30 and Thursday evening prayer at seven o'clock on Facebook Live with the Bar Harbor Congregational Church Facebook page. Our saunter, well, we'll look at this Thursday. It looks like we might get some snow on Thursday. We might take this Thursday off of our saunter, but usually it happens at 10 o'clock, leaving from the church. There's fresh food Fridays at the food pantry, Zoom Bible study on Friday. And next Sunday is our virtual Christmas pageant. It'll be during our Zoom worship service. And, and you'll find out a little bit more about that a little later on in our service this morning but I hope you and everyone you know will tune in for that. It'll be a lot of fun. Next Sunday, also the 20th, uh, week from today, 6.30 in the evening, we'll have virtual community Christmas caroling on our church's Facebook Live page. It'll be a lot of fun. Finally, let me mention the great congregational Christmas card caper. Basically, you think of some folks that you wanna send a card to, 
and you send them a card. Um, and if you're plumb out of ideas, you can talk with Ellen Goldsberry or Anna Brown. They can help direct you to some people who might particularly appreciate receiving a card. That's what's going on for now. Um, beloved, we gather together in the love and grace of God. Isaiah 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. God has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display God's glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For God has clothed me with the garments of salvation. God has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. Our introit is the third verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Let's join together in our call to worship. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. God has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O God, like the water courses in the desert. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Our first hymn is, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. From angels bending 
of hope, you call us home from the exile of self-absorption to the freedom of justice, the balm of healing, and the joy of sharing. Make us strong to join you in your holy work as friends of strangers and victims, companions of those whom others shun, and as the happiness of those whose hearts are broken. We pray in the name of Christ, Emmanuel. Amen. The candle for the third Sunday of Advent is pink or rose. It is named the shepherd candle or candle of joy. It is a shift in the season of Advent away from repentance and toward celebration. This is a reflection from Jesus Always by Sarah Young as Jesus speaking to us. When an angel announced my birth to shepherds living out in the fields near Bethlehem, he told them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy. The instruction to not be afraid is repeated in the Bible more than any other command. It is a tender, merciful directive, and it is for you. I know how prone to fear you are, and I do not condemn you for it. However, I do want to help you break free from this tendency. Joy is a powerful antidote to fear. And the greater the joy, the more effective an antidote it is. The angel's announcement to the shepherds was one of great joy. Don't ever lose sight of what amazingly good news the gospel is. You repent of your sins and trust me as Savior. I forgive all your sins, changing your ultimate destination from hell to heaven. Moreover, I give you myself, lavishing my love upon you, promising you my presence forever. Take time to ponder the angel's glorious proclamation to the shepherds. Rejoice in me, beloved. We'll join together in lighting our three Advent candles, the third candle, the candle of joy. Will you repeat after me? Jesus Christ, light of the world, shine among us today. Jesus Christ, light of the world, shine among us today. Our service continues with a time of prayer. 
I'd invite you to share your prayers by way of our chat, shares of celebration and joy, shares of yearning and concern. We lift up in prayer those whose names we have shared previously. We pray for Ada and Carl and Lonnie, Lee and Anne, Sue and Josephine and Rusty, Judy, Gertrude, Darlene, Levi, Luzvi, Les, Doug, Teddy, Yvette, Julie, Jackie, Nancy, Bill, Kathy, Jesse, Jean, Mary, Pete, Sandy, Alva, Ellen, Nelson, Kelly, Abby, Mitzi, Joy, and her family. We pray with celebration for the births of Will and Opal. We seek God's consoling spirit for all who have suffered losses recently. For the family and friends of Bob Terrio, Bob Raymond, Judith Carnahan, Ellen Reed Holloway, William Ellis, Del Nelson, Terry Swan, McKenna Unobski, and Danny Hahn's great-grandmother, Joyce. Pray for peace and guidance, wisdom and health, traveling mercies for those who travel. And we pray for those who suffer from mental illness and their families. We continue together in the spirit of prayer. Gracious one, savior, companion, and guide. We pause along our journey to recalibrate our compass, to make sure that where we're heading is where you lead, to listen for your voice, to feel for your hand and place our feet in your footsteps. Guide us gently, leading us along right paths. Amidst the noise of the season, we seek quiet and peace. Still worried hearts and anxious spirits. Bring rest and respite that dispel fear and rekindle joy. Help us make room in our hearts and in our lives for your coming once again, O oh God, our Emmanuel. We cannot paint this week with a gloomy brush. For when we pause to notice and remember, we saw flashes of vibrant color that brightened our lives. Eruptions of joy, welcome greetings, warm smiles, the kindness of strangers, the devotion of public servants, the compassion of first responders, the expertise of healers, the persistence of scientists, the vision of peacemakers, the presence of companions, the faithfulness of friends. We give you thanks, O oh God, for such reminders of your nurturing love. God of light, you revealed yourself as one who desires a justice that leads to true peace. Though some would avert their eyes and hearts, you regard and bless the destitute, the marginalized, and the wronged. And you call us to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release for the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, and to proclaim that now is the time of your blessing. Be present with your church, O God, as we respond to your call. Open our eyes, fill us with compassion, lead us into ministries that change lives and give us courage to block paths of exploitation and injustice. Strengthen the weak and give hope to those who live in fear. And keep us faithful in your service both now and always. Shine forth your healing light on all those who are ill in body 
mind, or spirit. Bridge our divisions. Reconcile our, your peoples, O oh God. Fashion us as your beloved, eager to share your kingdom of shalom. Open our hearts to your spirit until your glory is revealed in relentless love in communities transformed by justice and compassion and in the making whole of all that is torn asunder. We rest in your embrace, offering the prayers of our hearts, whether in silence or out loud or by way of chat. Hear our prayers, O oh God. We pray for peace for our country. We pray for teachers at the high school, for Ellen and Abby. We pray for healing for Lindsay's sister, Karen, who's in a lot of pain. We pray for those in nursing homes and those who care for them. We pray for frontline workers for safety and health, for Warren Goodman, for those preparing for Christmas without loved ones, for Catherine and Doug, for people in transitions. To your love, O oh God, we entrust all for whom we pray and our prayers both spoken and unspoken. Together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us sing our response. Scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 46b through 55. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors to Abraham, and to his descendants forever. The second scripture this morning is from the Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verses 6 through 8 and 19 through 28. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it. He but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptized with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Here ends the second reading. This song is called Could It Be? It is written through the perspective of the animals. Thank you. 
so much. I so appreciate your sharing your gift of music with us these, well, the whole time you've been here, but especially these last nine months here with the, uh, with the pandemic. Let us pray. Loving grace that you would pour out your spirit upon all of us. That what we say and what we do would testify to your light at work in our lives. Amen. On this third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday, as it's called, which means rejoice, I have a question. Is it okay to feel joy these days? Or should the difficulty of these times dampen our capacity to see and share joy. I ache for high school seniors this year as they get their acceptances from colleges because I can imagine they're not sure if it's okay to share good news in the midst of such anxious times. Times of illness, exhaustion, profound loss. Is it okay to be excited or joyous? Here's the thing, joy is different from happiness. Happiness depends on circumstances, a pleasant mood or a sunny day. But the fountain of joy rises from a deeper place, a sense that though all indeed is not well, one day it will be, maybe soon. It arises from a faith that suffering does not have the final word, that light shines in the darkness and darkness cannot overcome it. It arises from a faith that the arc of the moral universe may be long, but it bends towards justice. Joy takes the long view and draws strength from that even now. As the psalmist wrote, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. The inner secret of joy is this, knowing that suffering does not have the final word. Our lips begin to taste joy even in the deep of night. Our spirits can dance even when they're still heavy and sore. Today our scripture isn't just a story about John the Baptist and his call to testify to the light, even in the wilderness of darkness, but it's about God's call to each of us to share the hope and joy of God's grace, especially in difficult times. So class of 2021 and everyone else who might have swallowed the joy that God has given us to share. In the words of the gospel reading today, testify to the light, share the joy, don't hold back. We could really use it. Let's take a look at our friend John the Baptist first. We met him again last week, the camel hair wearing, locust and honey eating voice crying out in the wilderness. This week our gaze turns to him once again, this time focusing on his testifying to the light yet to come. His testimony has two parts. First, that his is a humble vocation. He acknowledges that he's barely the guy who tunes the guitars before the show. And second, that his call is ours too. For we too, while not the light ourselves, are surely called to testify to it. So let me start by looking at two words this morning, testify and light. 
And next I'll ask what testimony God has given us to share. What seeds of joy, what sparks of light. Not to keep, here, keep hidden for fear of sounding off key in discordant times. But instead to share as reminders not only that God is afoot even now, but also that night will not last forever. For joy is on the way and we can taste it even now. So the words are testify and light. In today's scripture, the religious authorities are trying to figure out who John the Baptist is. They ask him, are you the Messiah? No. Elijah? No. The prophet? No. So then they ask, who are you? And he says, I am a voice crying in the wilderness. And John writes, a witness come to testify to the light so that all might believe. The word testify in Greek is marturo, from which we get the word martyr. And it means to affirm that one has seen or heard or experienced something. As a verb, it means to give testimony as opposed to hold it back. And so it's something not coerced, but proclaimed with the flavor of something you can't help but share. As I mentioned, there are two parts to this. The first part is when John the Baptist says, I'm not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet. I am not the light. Instead, let me tell you about the light which is to come. This light. In Greek, phos, like phosphorescence. And John means the saving truth embodied in Christ and by Christ's love and effort imparted to humankind. John the Baptist's message is the light is coming. And th through this light, we find life. And John says, I know this. I've seen, heard, experienced something that convinces me of its deep truth and which compels me to share it with you. I'd say John is more than just an eye witness or an ear witness, but a life witness. He's not doing what he's doing because he doesn't have anything better to do, but because he can't help but do it. He's got to testify to God's redeeming light in a humble and authentic and therefore compelling way. As we engage with scripture, we often wonder, is it something to hold at arm's length a chronological narrative essentially about other people? Or is it a story that includes us? Something that touches our lives now, even hundreds of years later? Is today's passage only about John? Or is it about us too? John's compelling and humble life witness. He's not the light, but came to bear witness to it. Well, it's ours as well. The light of God has touched and shaped our lives. And ought we to testify to this too? Many congregations include as a regular part of their worship, a time for folks to give testimony, to say how God has, seen, has been at work in their lives. When, as one writer put it, folks can't keep it to themselves how good God has been. A couple of weeks ago, Kelly shared her own moving testimony, how God provided both clarity and food for hungry people in a stressful time. It touched people's hearts and encouraged us all to hear and know that God indeed is at work in our lives. And it even helped us to recall our own God moments. Sometimes we too share a piece of testimony during worship or in the course of our daily lives. News of healing, or a safe journey, or a new job, or a joyous reunion. Words of praise and thanks to God, shared among brothers and sisters, that encourage us all and point to the light shining in our midst. Whenever we do this, we're doing what the Apostle Paul refers to when he exhorts the church to build one another up, not with vain conceits, but 
with testimonies about the grace of God at work in our lives. So in these stressful and uncertain times, when it could seem off key to share good or hopeful news, John the Baptist is a model to encourage us to try another tack, to be a voice of love crying in the wilderness, a spark of light shining in darkness, to testify to the coming light, to illuminate a path of hope through the fog of discouragement. John the Baptist's testimony includes two things, this humble acknowledgement that he is not indeed the light, but second, he has come to bear witness to the light. So I'll share a little testimony. I am not the light. I am not God. I am reminded of this constantly, though my rebellious, perfectionistic spirit can try to convince me otherwise. But this week, oh, the people who support work, whose support, work, passion, encouragement, compassion, make the measure of joy in my life possible. I think about Grady, our very own Grady, who's up 5.30 in the morning to go and lifeguard over at the pool. I think about Bradley workshopping songs, Richard patching up our plaster, which I'm looking over and you can see just over in the corner there. I think about our worship team, our backpack team, our TLC team, our Bible study gang, our gathering in person team, our recruitment team, the poinsettia people, and I'll get out of the way so you can see how beautiful they are. Think about the vaccine scientists and research volunteers. And of course, I think about my family and so many others. No one can do it all by themselves. And when I remember this, my eyes open again to the light and to grace. Which brings me to joy. Let me say a little something about it. This week I've glimpsed tremendous grace and joy. And the first thing I think of when I say that is our Christmas pageant coming up next Sunday. I won't spoil it, but the cries of joy it inspired in me this week. And along with this, a permission or a freedom to laugh, or the only other word I could think about is to sparkle. A bunch of videos sent in from our church family, stories of the fun people had making them. Their joy inspired me to do that crazy PSA, public service announcement about staying safe at Christmas, about distancing, masking, and washing, using our nativity set, which you can see on my Facebook page. Our saunter was joyful too. We, we kind of took our time. We saw new and colorful things. We were patient and kind. This reconnecting, warming presence a microcosm of our life's journey. Warmth on a chilly day. So in spite of the heaviness of these days, we can experience joy. And let me say this, don't, lo don't the let the heaviness of these days mute our witness or dim our light. Instead, turn it up. I'd like to touch on our reading from Luke's Gospel, the Song of Mary. John the Baptist lived in tremendously difficult and uncertain times and was moved to testify to the coming light. Same with Jesus' mother, Mary. Her song in what's known as the Magnificat, a cup of joy and hope and promise running over. In it, she sings God's praise for promises already beginning to be fulfilled. The match is set to the kindling. God has done what God has promised. And now is the time, the break of dawn glimmering faintly on the horizon. This morning, I invite us to hear her song as a testimony. And to do so, I want you to imagine what circumstances would lead her to rejoice using what might sound to us like unsettling words. Perhaps her experience of profound exclusion or dismissal or unrelenting poverty and oppression, or fear under Roman occupation, or the weight of injustice, or the shadows of despair. 
Her voice rises like that of John. Or like we hear in Isaiah, Comfort ye, my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned. The voice of one that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken this. Mary's spirit dances, her heart soars, her words testify to the grace of God at work in her life and indeed in the life of her people Israel. So too may we find opportunities to testify to the light of God at work in our lives, undimmed by the difficulty of these times, a buoyant witness illuminating lives, and inspiring hope. Let your light so shine that all may give glory to God in heaven. Our hymn is called The Canticle of the Turning based on Mary's song. We'll sing it together.
Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but hold fast to what is good and abstain from evil. May the God of peace sanctify you completely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and God will do this. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. mentioned the pageant next week to whet your appetite. I thought you might like to see this. The light which God has kindled in us, God now calls us to bear wherever we go. Beloved, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine. 